What's up, baby? We're Ooh, live God. in the Hangout Live right here on Facebook. What's happening, Robbie? Look what I got. Your microphone on, brother. My mic's on. There you are. There you are. Something about a uh, heavenly <laughs> scent. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What you got? What are you gonna try? Oh, while boom! We... Oh, look at that. Oh. What is that? Brad took care of your boy, buddy. I've got some Steel Dragon. Oh, Steel Dragon. I had that already. You're a little bit behind the game. <laughs> well, at least now I'm in the game. You are in the game. Hey, you know, you, you never know where you end up. Once you get in, you could end up in first place and you could be drinking some heavenly scent. Right on. Cheers, Cheers to my brother. Cheers. All right. Welcome back to the Hangout team. Welcome back to the Hangout Live. We've got a great show tonight. we got a lot to talk about before we get into it, though. Are you ready? Yeah, what's going on in the East Coast right now? Something going on so over the there? East Coast apparently has lost power. I'm getting a lot of messages from our viewers that they're not going to be able to tune in tonight, so they're going to have to watch the rewind. Wow. So that is definitely something that uh, is going to be a bummer for them, but uh, I hope everything works out for you guys and you get your power back soon, man. And then uh, let's talk about the Facebook page. What happened? We need to do an explanation here because we had a million questions. So, originally, we started the Facebook page on a different Facebook page, and we had a lot of viewers and followers from that page that didn't make it over to the other page, and they were getting confused on where they go to watch the video and the show. So, I got in touch with Facebook, and I said, well, let's merge the two pages. 
Facebook said, yeah, we can do that. No problem. And I said, all right, well, the Hangout Live page needs to stay put. Let's merge the other page into it and then erase the other page. They said, yeah, we got you. We got you. No problem. Basically enough, they did not have us. They ended up deleting the wrong page with all of our videos, all of our views, all of our comments and shares and likes, and all of that beauty is gone. gone. So I'm having to reload every single video we've had. And then I'm fighting with Facebook to get the views back to where they should be because, you know, it's just not right. So hopefully things get worked out very soon. The Hangout Live, if you were a fan of it, you're still a fan of it, you're still a like of the page, you don't have to worry about doing anything, but we've lost all of our content. We're now trying to rebuild the page actively. So that explains that. And moving forward, we got Backbeat, Backbeat Music sponsor. That's it, Backbeat Music right here in San Angelo. They are by far the best company that I can tell you about, man. Alexandra and the team over there, They've got some killer guitars, drum sets, everything you need. Plus, they're all musicians themselves, and they kick some serious ass. And they've got a serious studio in there, too, don't they? Like, they got a, a legit. Serious, serious studio. Like, what was it? Grammy-nominated albums came out of this studio. Many of them. Yes. So Matt, uh, go... Matt brought me on a tour there not too long ago with his on Facebook. It was like, what the heck? I go, man, you should be filming in front of those things. It'll, you know... <laughs> right yeah absolutely all right so our other sponsor is jody with media job jody jody is now taking care of our our face our, our facebook page and our website which is the hangout dot live so tonight our production guy that normally handles all the pictures and all the fun stuff he's actually not uh he's, he's having some issues so he's not going to be joining us tonight so i am going to try to do everything myself so imagine it's going to be pretty screwed up i'm looking at you robbie or am i <laughs> all right tonight's show we got Stuart marriott and we had Stuart on just for a few minutes before the show it's going to be a great show digging the hat and we'll hear more about this coming up should we get him in here yeah we were we had so many stories going on going we got to save this for the show <laughs> save it baby save it all right yeah. let's get him in here Oh, Stuart. There he is. What's up? <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> How you doing, my brother? I'm doing well. How about you guys? I'm Excellent. doing good, man. I'm oh, matching, that... matching the style of my model friend over there on the Whoa. other side. Of the Looking, Looking good. good. What's on your hat, man? What do you got on there? What's on there? That's the Broken Arrows, baby. And we're going to talk a lot about this tonight, are we not? Okay, right on, right on. Yeah. All right. Right. All right. So, Stuart Marriott, obviously. Stuart. You, uh, you've had a pretty storied life, my friend, and we're going to get into all of that. Let's go back to the beginnings. Robbie, you, you want to kind of talk a little bit here about, uh, let's talk about the name. Let's talk about. Okay. Well, I'm not going to talk about it. We're going to let him talk about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Obviously, we all know the name Marriott. And I, I know that you've got the relation with the Marriott family there. Um, Your grandfather's older brother. Older brother. Yeah started it all started the chain yeah so hot spots and hotels right so now i'm gonna ask this because what is uh, is it a hot spot is that what it was hot spot oh shops uh, hot, hot shops. shops hot shops what's a hot shop like sundays it, that's from the 20s uh, it goes back to the 20s uh where you know I, I think it goes back to my grandfather's brother's wife alice sheets marriott uh they married um she was pretty brilliant herself. She graduated really young from, I think, a uh, university there in Utah. And she had connections in Washington, D.C. They moved back to Washington, D.C. and started selling uh, hot dogs and root beer on the street. And when it got cold, um, they decided, uh, you know, people don't want hot dogs and root beer in the Washington, D.C. colder weather. And they started doing, I think, hot tamales and coffee and stuff. And then that spawned into like a, a drive up uh, shop uh, uh, where you could go sit and eat, sit down and eat food. So that became sort of like uh, uh, Roy Rogers is actually kind of like a Denny's type establishment. 
and my grandfather was involved in the food service side. So for many years, it was food service. And then wow. his, uh, Jay Willard's younger, uh, oldest son had the idea for hotels and it spawned into, a, I think, the largest hotel company in the world for a while. I think Starwood, uh, when they acquired Starwood, they were the largest. And then I don't know what, where they're at right now. Interesting. Nice, brother. Uh, nice. Yeah. That clears Incredible. that up. <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's talk about little Stewart growing up in the Marriott family what transpired back to make you want to go in the models let, let me bring up a photo of you real quick just to just to show people what we're okay. talking about here I've, I've got one for you here how about this one right. look at this guy <laughs> come on you look like James Dean and Elvis Presley smashed into each other <laughs> thank you <laughs> I wish so, I still looked like that. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. So no. what transpired? What what happened in life? Because I know you had some music, you had some modeling. What what drove you as an artist? To, now you grew to do... up in Dallas. Did you grow up your whole life in Dallas or was it? Yeah, so I grew up in Dallas, North Dallas. Um, that's why I was telling you how, you know, we all knew Vanilla Ice growing up and stuff. And like Tony Dorsett, we would knock on doors for Halloween for trick or treat. And it'd be two tall Jones, you know, wow. or running back, you know, like uh, we, we knew Danny White uh, and Roger Staubach and stuff. And my wow. dad did some real estate investing with Roger Staubach uh, in the seventies, wow. eighties and all that. So this goes way back. I mean, it's, it's Dallas. I mean, it's the Cowboys were like the team and, I grew up there summers. We spent in New Hampshire. Uh, our family had our, my grandfather had a house on a lake up uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, the movie on golden pond was filmed there. I think with Jane oh, cool. Fonda. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So it's like a retreat, like a compound. It's become more of like, a, like the Kennedys have a kind of a compound. It's become more of like a family compound, uh, a summer thing. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's, so I, you know, I just, you grew up, you don't know, we never talked about money. It was never something that you talked about as a kid. It was just, you know, we just, we were focused on, we're very religious, we're Mormon, we, we, our family crossed the plains. I'm actually in England right now, right, right close to where my family originated. Um, we're not just a bit little uh, east of London near Bath, uh, where the Romans had settled and stuff. So they joined the church there, moved to Utah, you know, that kind of thing. So we're a, we're a very religious family, you know, we're pretty conservative. So that's actually something Joan Rivers asked me when I was on her show. Uh, in the 90s, uh, she interviewed me and a few other guys, and she was saying, so why, why would you do this? And don't you have a very conservative family? And what did they think about it and stuff? And, you know, at the time, um, modeling, male modeling especially, had a little, had kind of a stigma behind it in the 80s. And then the early 90s, like, uh, you know, back then, there wasn't all this gay talk, and it was like, you're considered gay. You know, it was, you know, being from Texas, too, it was like, what's gay? Gay wasn't really spoken about much at, in those times. And so, uh, and so those stigmas kind of carried a little bit. And so I, I uh, kind of discussed that with her. And, and yeah, my parents weren't thrilled. I mean, I studied in college to be a doctor. I was a pole vaulter. I pole vaulted at Dalton throughout high school. I pole vaulted at Brigham Young University. So, um, you know, I was thinking a uh, doctor would be an interesting, uh, you know, pathway. But I, I wrote a hundred dreams list as a kid. Uh, when I was 16, 100. I mean, it sounds crazy. Uh, you know, you guys may be dialed into this, but I mean, limitless concepts like go to the moon on my honeymoon, run 100 miles without stopping, cycle 150 miles, uh, write my own book, do a movie, become top model in the world, have a healing center. I mean, I had really outlandish uh, things on there. And by 26, you know, I'd done all of it, except for I think three. I didn't date Cindy Crawford. She wouldn't date me. I didn't make enough money. <laughs> You didn't so what? She, I didn't make enough money. I didn't make enough money at the time. Was, oh God! <laughs> wow. The male models, we only make like like two hundred fifty grand. They maybe if you get lucky, you know, you know, you'd get like maybe a um, a cologne campaign. But I, being Mormon, I didn't do any alcohol. I didn't do any cigarette. Anything I didn't believe in ethically. Not not that I would project it onto other people. I just wouldn't promote it myself. So I turned down a, quite a bit of money every year. Uh, not taking those jobs because that's the big oh. that's the big money those are the bigger money jobs like cigarette campaign like quarter of a million dollars you know so it's like ugh. it's hard yeah. to turn down that money right no I you wish know. I hadn't done that <laughs> <Just kidding>. yeah <laughs> no. maybe standing with a bottle of Jack and a cigarette huh? yeah I'm like give me uh, give me the, uh, whatever. so no it's just you know I don't know I I, I grew up in a very idealistic family culture. 
Uh, I grew up in a, in a, in a, you know, very American, very pro American pro, um, you know, we respected others beliefs, but we had our strong personal beliefs. Um, nice. Very nice. You know, <laughs> on that note, I think we've got a producer that has a question for you. Actually, oh. we're going to bring in a producer here. Hold on just a moment. All right. And uh, we'll tie into that, that question. Who's that producer? Uh, Who's that? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Writing questions down. Hi, Stuart. Nice to meet you. Hi, my pleasure. Nice hey. to meet you. First of all, I cannot believe Cindy Crawford did not date you. <laughs> yeah, let's get, her, let's get her on the phone. What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we have a couple questions. Um, one is from James, and it is um, growing up as a Marriott, uh, were there any pressures? Pressures. Um, well, okay. So like we're very type A, so pressure was just, there's always pressure. Why, if you got a B, why didn't you get an A? If you got an A, well, Bs weren't really accepted. Why didn't you get an A plus? Why aren't you taking AP courses? Yeah. Why aren't you getting college credit early? Why, if you're waking up at five in the morning, you should wake up at four 30. You should, you know, that, that was, you know, I don't, I, I can't say Marriott cause I have, uh, you know, my uncles that, are basically retired at this point. I think Dick Marriott ran the REIT side, real estate investment, and Bill ran Marriott Corporation. And I think he was the longest running CEO in the history of USA, America, that never got you know kicked out like a Steve Jobs type thing, right? Uh, so, you know, I can't speak for them. We only, you know, they probably hung out with them during the summer. They lived in Washington, DC. I lived in Dallas, but very type A, I guess, as far as that goes, high expectations. If you were going to do something, you had to be the best or why were you doing it, I guess. And I don't know if that thought process is is prevalent anymore uh, with children. I mean, maybe it was a very 80s thing, right? We all wanted to be the fastest runner. We all wanted to, you know, whatever it was. So we thought if you're going to do it, do it, do it well, do it with integrity and be the best, at least your best. Yep. Okay. okay. And one more question. Thank you for that answer, by the way, is um, sure. what did you love the most about being a male model? A male model. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I got into it as one of my hundred dreams list because as a doctor, you have to memorize every origin and insertion of every muscle, connective tissue. I mean, it, it was a lot like, you know, pronator teres is like in your leg somewhere. And then there's the strongest muscles, the buccinator, it's in your jaw. I don't even know how I still remember this stuff. It's ridiculous. But when I started modeling, it was, I was homeless for about six months. I lived it, uh, well, I was moved out there with a few friends and we went to a vanilla ice party with Madonna and like Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet. And then I got kicked out of that party for some, so we, me and Vanilla Ice didn't get along at that point in time. So there was some underlying issues there. And then I was homeless for like six months. So then I uh, met Versace, he grabbed me on my right arm. I almost punched him in the face because I was very homophobic at that time in my life. I know that's uh, horrible to say that, but this is the 90s, this is like 92. And he told me, I, I want to do a picture of you. And I was like, what are you saying? Get away from me. And it was very uncomfortable. But then, um, so after being homeless for some time, the pictures did come out out of about 12 really handsome, ripped, awesome guys. Somehow my face made the magazines and made everything. And then literally after that, I was never homeless again. I bought a house on an island in North uh, wow. Miami Beach. I had a house in Los Angeles in my 20s. I stayed in places in New York and in Paris and Milan. So I, I, I had amazing representation. Irene Marie was my rep. Uh, Nicole uh, was my booker. She's still in the bed. People are still in this business. Even now, it's, it's unbelievable. They stick, you know, but with these businesses, they stay, really. They do, and it's amazing. And they were all very amazing at what they did. So I think I may have looked like Jason Priestley or Luke Perry. I don't know what happened. Versace grabbed me. I feel like it was lucky. And then all of a sudden I'm on the Joan Rivers show making a lot of money. So I guess the long and short of it is I like the traveling. I eventually like trying to learn languages. Mm -hmm. Like I speak some Italian. My kids make fun of me because I speak Spanish, like with Italian accent. So it's like, I don't know, it, it's all jumbled up. But the different uh, opportunities for travel <clears throat> opens your mind to other possibilities. It opens your mind to different ways of thinking. Like my wife now is British. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, even just in here in England, I mean, the culture is actually quite different, even though we speak the same language, it's kind of a different thing, you know, culturally. So the cultural, the food, the travel, it just really opened my mind um, as a very long answer to your question. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Great answer. We'll bring yeah. you back. Okay. All right. So, so you were making good money, but not enough money for Cindy Crawford. 
No, not enough for Cindy, Linda Evangelista, <laughs> not enough for Naomi, not enough for really any of, I mean, they're wow. all like looking for well, rock they, stars. I mean, they were looking wow. for rock stars. It's the truth. They're, they're looking for you, man. Where were you? Where yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You would think that people are going to look look at you for who you are, you know, not you look past the, all that. But, you know, that's I don't want to say, yeah, I mean, I don't want to point that finger. But yeah, I mean, you know, in that business, uh, you know, there was, I mean, you know, uh, sometimes you got the cover of a magazine taken away from the lead singer of Guns N' Roses. Sometimes it was, you know, whatever. And we all kind of were going for the same uh, things at the same time for, uh, in some ways, in some areas. And then yeah. at the same time, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of ladder climbing in Hollywood, a lot of ladder climbing. I don't know what to say about it other than, you know, uh, I guess everyone just had to do their hustle, you know, same same with a lot of other businesses. And you were saying um, earlier about when you guys were uh, on shoots, you'd be on shoots with the women, like yeah. you know, the big models, the supermodels. I think that's when the term supermodel came in was in the 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's oh, yeah. when you first started hearing that. But you guys were on shoots, yeah. or you were on shoots, and I guess there's other male models, and yeah. they didn't have dressing rooms for, they just one dressing room. No, there's no dressing. Well, in the runway shows in Italy and Milan and Paris, and you know, uh, the biggest shows in the world. It would just honestly, I think it was a logistics thing. You know, Carrie Otis. Uh, if you, you guys know who Carrie, Carrie is she? You know, she was married yeah. to Mickey Mickey Rourke for a okay. while. And she has her book that she's really speaks out on all these kind of issues about what happened to her. Um, there were a lot of, you know, the whole it, it you, you know, sorry, the whole me, me too movement. She wrote her book before that and took all the hits. Uh, I forget like in Hollywood, who, who was that person? It was like a, one of those younger guys that I think may have played uh, in Goonies that kind of came out and was like, Hey, yeah, you know, uh, the, some really crazy things happened to me. He was kind of before the, the, the me too movement as well. Right. And so she's really outspoken about that where she believes there should be private dressing groups and there really right. should be. I mean, there, there's some of those girls. I mean, I remember Tara Banks when I first met her, I think she was probably 16. I don't remember her mom being there. And then Aerosmith's daughter, Liv Tyler, lovely. I took a plane ride from New York to Milan with her. I mean, she's just lovely, smart, beautiful. She was, I think, 15 or 16. Uh, and so, you know, these girls, I mean, I remember Tara saying, hey, pull off my boots for me. And then I was like, wow, um, you're not, you know, you're very scantily clad and you're young and this is just weird. So I'm, like, I'm going to yeah. let the professionals handle that. And I, you know, I just remember in the Versace show, just changing my clothes and really staying focused. And I bet everyone's very professional about it. Um, but it, it just was uh, maybe a logistics thing. It was kind of madness. It was like, you go back there and literally they're, they're like fixing stuff as you, before you go on the runway. And I don't know, it was just kind of some madness going on there. So my mom was a professional model. Obviously, she never made it to the heights that you did, but she would right sit on. and tell us about how it was when you came off a runway that, like, you walk backstage and they just start stripping stuff off yeah. you and throwing yeah. stuff right. on you. There's, there's no way to have any kind of uh, shame in what you have because it's no. it's what it is. Not back then, like I said. I mean, and I and I've seen some really nutty things too. I mean, I I at one point wanted to write a book about it under a false name, uh, and just kind of like you know do that. But I guess there goes that idea. If, if I ever do that, everyone's gonna know, <laughs> All right? <laughs> but yeah, because I, I mean, I, I, I've seen. I mean, you get you, there's some weird things you see, and I mean, I'm talking back then in the '90s. I, I don't know now, but I mean, I've seen horrible things happen to straight guys that you know at some certain particular designers were very like you know they weren't straight so they were gonna figure out ways to get a straight guy to go their way i mean and there were some pretty brutal tactics that i have personally witnessed kind of like what carrie otis witnessed with some of the um the sort of men hitting at the younger women and that's very it, you know it's getting talked about constantly now right it's all over the right. news but right. back then nobody talked about it because that was like your money you felt lucky to be there. You didn't want anyone taking your cheese. And I don't know, no one, no one really spoke up. I don't think there was platforms. I mean, here we are talking on Facebook right now. We could potentially reach what, 4 billion people between yeah. Instagram and Facebook. No one had that power. That's what's cool about what you guys are doing right now is, you know, you can't even get mainstream media to give you the truth about anything anymore, really, right? Yep. So it's where's right, Walter right. Cronkite? Like you're the new Walter Cronkite, man. You guys are Walter yeah. Cronkite right here. You know, <laughs> the real deal, you know? That's it. So we've got to get 
We've got a guest that we're going to pop in because she's been having some computer problems and she may not be able to stay in there very longer, much longer. So we've got a guest for you here, Stuart. Okay. Stuart. Cool. Here we go. Let's see if you recognize this. Okay. Maybe. If she appears. If she appears. Okay. Come on, Lisa. Where are you? It's Lisa Williams. Is oh, cool. Like oh, I love Lisa. She's so sweet. And by the way, if you guys want to give away some free stuff, we got four piece where we can, you know, if you get people's uh, addresses and stuff, we can send people some stuff, you know, your, cool. your viewers. Right on. Nice. Well, it looks like right now she's got, she's got some computer problems. So when oh, she's talking Okay. We'll talk. So let, let, let's let's back up just a little bit before we get to this, my brother. Okay. So, all right. So you did the modeling thing from 93 to 98, right? So five That's years. Right. That's five right. Five years. Oh, there, there she is. is. What's that? There's Lisa. Oh. Hey, Lisa. Oh, you got to turn on your, your microphone on. She doesn't have her mic on. Mm. Can you turn your mic on, Lisa? Your microphone. Microphone right. check. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep talking until she pops up here. All right. So 2012, you you become CEO at basically of, of your own deal, Antiqua Ver, Veritas, Veritas Productions. Veritas. Veritas. Yeah, Veritas yeah. Productions. All right. right. So that starts the beginning of Rise of the 2000 Sons. Is that correct? Exactly right. All right, let's show a video or a photo of that here real quick, if I can get good at this. All right, here <laughs> we go. Our production guy that normally runs all of our production for us has actually had some issues tonight. So here is the Rise of the 2000 Suns project. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So let's talk about this, my brother, because this is something that is near and dear to my heart, and I find absolutely amazing. Right on. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So Rise of the 2000 Sons is epic drama. Uh, it's, a, it's an action film inspired by the legends. And I'm going to let you say the name of, of the tribe. Iroquois. So the Iroquois, they call themselves the hot, hot, hot the long, the people of Longhouse. It's a nickname the French gave them. Yep. All right. Perfect. Lisa, you got any, got any volume there yet? Yes. No. <laughs> it looks like she throws up. We're going to throw her in the waiting room here. I'll have production uh, time here. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So it, it's based on, it's kind of like as fierce as you, you all seen the movie, The Last Samurai. It's it's as fierce as that with the soul of the apocalyptic, apocalypse. Apocalypto, like Mel Gibson's, uh, Mel Gibson's film uh, that they did in Central America, Apocalypto. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you kind of take it from there, man. Let's talk about this. Sure. Yeah, no, it's it really, you know, life is so weird, right? You, you, you go to school, you learn the basics and you think, what can I be? You know, honestly, when I did career choices in school, I thought I want to be a stunt man. I was like, I want to be a stunt man. Everyone's like doctor, lawyer, doctor. I'm like, I just want to be a stunt man. You know, like, and then I was like, well, they only make $20,000 back in the eighties. I was like, I guess stunt man's out. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be a stunt man. <laughs> <laughs> if they make if they making that much money, I guess I don't want to do it. I don't know. So you just don't know. And and you know, so in life, you know, you go through these undulations where you're a son, you're maybe a brother, you might, you know, you might be um, you know, a dad eventually, and then you have kids and you're a husband and you're, you know, still a son and a brother and all these things. And then, you know, at that phase in life, I was married, I had five kids, um, you know. Uh, so I, I, I would do a lot of prayer and meditation, believe it or not. Uh, you know, I have now it's five daughters and two sons. So I have a, a big wow. tribe with my new wife. So there's a lot of pressure that goes into being a dad and, and figuring out life. And so a lot of pressure to make the money. And there's a lot of pressure to figure out what your purpose is. And so my purpose is always kind of aligned with tr speaking the truth uh, and trying to get truth out to the world. So Antiqua Veritas is ancient truth is the reason we call it that and as in, in Latin uh, the language and so this came to me in kind of a waking vision I don't know what else to say about it uh, uh, I was a big fan of Braveheart I like these kind of uh, movies that, that took you through a, a, a hero's journey and in this film the heroes are actually willing to die for peace 
and the rise of the 2000 sun. So it came as like a middle movie, like star Wars. And then the second movie is rise of the matriarchs. And that's halfway written. And the first movie is called Orthon, which is a Mel, uh, the Mel Gibson character um, kind of comes from the tower of Babel when it's destroyed. So we, the film goes back like 5,000 years on the timeline. If you think about avatar, it's way in the future. Um, it's so far, far in the future. You can't really, you know, knock the fact that there's like nine foot tall blue people. Right. So, right. um, and if they're dressed in a certain way, it's like, well, that's in the future, isn't it? So the past kind of has the same uh, kind of like thought process where archaeologists, it's so far back where there's Sanskrit, there's no real written record, there's no real way to touch it and say they didn't have these kind of tattoos, they didn't have those kind of swords. So we really took a, the film back in time so that the story is the focus versus what they're wearing or how they're talking. And so, but in this story, there's a, a bunch of people die for peace as about a thousand and five men die for peace uh, in, a, in a true type of a story where, yeah, the, the heads are chopped off and stabbed and things like that. And so because the civil war happens where one of the characters, Dirithian, decides for peace after many years of being a warlike nation and then he inherits the nation from his father and with Rami on his brother. So at one point in time, the, the tribes separate, one goes for peace. Uh, once they're found in their hidden valley, it's called the Valley of Dirithian, they are massacred and they will not, you know, uh, they will not deter. They're, will, they're willing to literally die for peace. And, you know, if you think about it in terms of a man or, or a purpose, what is your, what, think about what would you do for free? Well, you know, whatever, right? What, what type of work would you do for free shows you purpose or what would you die for, right? And these people were willing to die for peace and they all get like the broken arrow symbol so like tattooed, uh, but seared on their left arm showing, you know, that's their outward symbol. And then, you know, that they will stay for peace. But the, before they were peaceful people, they were bloodthirsty killers. So it's like, uh, you know, I don't know, a bunch of heroin addicts that are like, I'll never do heroin again or whatever you, I don't know what to say. Hitler, that's like, I'll never, you know, be Hitler again or whatever. And so they had a pretty fierce commitment to peace. And this film kind of shows that through the prism of war, bloodshed, um, and then ultimately peace. So it's, it's a true Iroquois story on one hand. Um, when we spoke to the Iroquois, they gave us sacred tobacco. They gave it to my wife, uh, it's a matriarchal society, um, and offered us their lands to shoot the film on in New York. So it's, it's a big honor. We're striving to get Mel Gibson attached and Randall Wallace as the rewrite. Uh, so it's, it's a process. We had a lady contact us recently that she wanted to fund the whole thing. So we'll see. That was actually two days ago. And so we've talked to lots of people. And the film funding business, you find a lot of people want to waste your time but our partner is, is uh, Gerald R. Mullen who got the Academy Award for Schindler's List so he's amazing and he's in his 90s uh, he's very talented and so once we can get him paired with Mel Gibson and, and they get the 40 mil we might reduce it down for a Netflix it's no one knows what to do right now with, with film releases right so and right. that's uh, right. really the thing so it shows peace is mightier than war love conquers hate faith is mightier than fear those kind of overall concepts through, you know, there's some interesting female archetypes, there's some strong male archetypes, there's some wickedness in it, there's forbidden love in it. I mean, there's a lot of interesting characters as it's written now, and, and we, we want Randall Wallace to rewrite it, the writer of Braveheart. Beautiful, beautiful. So what character am I that gets decapitated, brother? Um, okay, so you'd be one of the originally henchmen, one of the henchmen uh, dressed up like a native. So this will be a, a lot of Native American actors, I would say 90% will be Native American. But since Mel Gibson comes from uh, Babylon, and the Tower of Babylon is taken by ancient mariners to the United States, uh, well, back then ancient, ancient, they call it, they call it Turtle Island. The indigenous call this Turtle Island. And they, they want it back, really. I mean, they're like, hey, we want our land back, you know. That kind of thing. A lot of them, not not all of them, but so yeah. So it's 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 Native American Indians. The, the look, Samoans. Everyone's tattooed up. I mean, there's these are you you know these ones that go for peace used to be murderers and killers. So you got to right. get your good mur murdering, killing vibe on, and then kind of like go from there. And then when you become peaceful, you still kind of got those battle scars, you know. Right. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> are you a method Absolutely. actor? I don't know. Are you a method actor? <laughs> yes, very much so. Very much so. So Lisa, Lisa thinks she's got it fixed before we lose her again. Let's try her one more time here and then we'll get All back right. to this. Let's try her one more time. All right. Lisa, do you have it fixed? No, still can't hear you. We can see you. We just can't hear you. Dang it. 
Keep trying, kiddo. We'll get back to you. Let... <laughs> All right. So let's talk about that because you also wrote a children's book. Yes. And that shocked me because I didn't know that. Anyway, we've talked how many times now? Um, and you, didn't, you wrote a children's book? We've texted. Yeah. No, sorry. I didn't mention. Yeah. Well, I can't take credit for any of this stuff, right? So my, my lovely wife, Kelly is my co-author and we're actually, we're working on our second book. It'll be coming out here probably in like 50 days. Uh, so that'll be coming out too soon, but yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, we did. Sounds good. And the name of that is the 2000th warrior, correct? Yes. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. So we share something in common between my wife and I, we've got five boys and two girls. Oh, wow. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? so that's really cool being a dad now you, you were actually out being a dad today let me see if i can share this photo that you sent me oh cool <laughs> all right so we're texting back and forth today robbie right and right. as he said he's over in the uk right now and by his heritage he's been right by my heritage too which is in devon england um, buckland abbey and the drake family line comes from there but i text him today and he's like yeah well, we're out doing this. And he says, he sends this to me. <laughs> Let's see it. Oh, the get top is there. Get that top off of there. Yeah. There, been working right here. there we go. Oh, there we go. Cool. Look at this dude. You're out jumping BMX today in the UK. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. then he sends me a text that he had to, he had to teach his boy how to ride Texas style like the Texas boys do that we are. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it, man. I love it. So what took you over to the UK? Why are you there now? You're going to be there for like six months. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. My, my lovely wife, her dad's having some uh, medical issues. It might be some end of life type stuff. So multiple uh, medical issues. So we're kind of, you know, helping out with him. We've, done some quarantining. A lot of people didn't think we we're going to be able to make it over here, but it was actually easier than you would, you would think to get really? into the UK. Yeah. I was like, you know, passport scan, you're in, you know, it's that thing and uh, nothing to declare. Right. Um, right. But yeah. And, and um, so, so we're helping him out and, you know, it's, it's a nice opportunity for our, we have our youngest two, we got some older kids that are married. They may come over. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, um, we're loving it. I mean, we've been surfing. We were surfing yesterday uh down in actually devon and kind of where your family where your heritage is from great surf down there by the way uh have, and you, over and seen, have you went over and seen buckland abbey we will be doing that shortly no we have not got to take yet. some photos yeah. for me brother yeah we will i'll do that yeah i'll do it i'll do it that, that's, yeah. that's my lineage robbie robbie looks like he's like halfway through his glass of wine there he's starting to get those eyes no i'm good oh, cool. <laughs> see those eyes <laughs> we did skip over two things though i wanted to talk about one would be the record deal that you had okay you, right had, you had a record deal we should talk about that a little bit well production record deal sorry production, uh, production oh, okay production, okay production deal. okay production deal uh um yeah so java is the label i was trying to think um ballard is the guy's last name. yes glenn ballard glenn ballard thank you yeah, yeah glenn ballard. Yeah. yeah lovely guy i mean brilliant um and uh i got it i got an introduction to him i went in i at that point in time it was i so i started in 93 it was like 97 96 97 that in that range and we had a cd rom of music videos I, I was able to work with a couple of semi-talented producers and we had what we thought might be a, a hit maybe you know not sure but about six music videos all on a cd rom i mean imagine in that time period the 90s uh, yeah. There wasn't any internet, right? And so we had it all on a disc. And when I handed it to Glenn, he goes, what do I do with this? <laughs> you put it in your computer. <laughs> wow. He didn't know what to do with it. And so wow. he put it in his computer and it was very short clips of music videos we'd shot. I mean, we'd shot the music videos in Paris, parts of it in Paris, London on different trains. And it was yeah, kind of a, a mix of an audio visual because we were, you know, we weren't Milli Vanilli. The, the band was called C4, actually. Uh, see the four, it's called See the Four Corners of the Earth Come Together. Uh, and it's also a plastic explosive. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, it's, he's, he was a lovely guy. I mean, he, he, he wanted um, something that he would 
but he could put a finger on and say, okay, that's a hit. So he wanted me to work with his producers out of actually out of Dallas at the time, a producer out of Dallas. And then I had the opportunity to marry a woman at that time. Then she had a two year old son. So I kind of just checked out. I was like, you know what? I don't want to be. And at that time, it was like Limp Biscuit would have been, if you would have gotten involved, would have been like Limp Biscuit. And I think, uh, I'm trying to think who else. Um, that kind of like white rap guy that was doing playing yeah. every instrument and doing everything at that time too oh uh, uh, that would have been kid rock was doing kid that. rock yeah kid yeah. Rock. yeah exactly yeah exactly so that would have been that was the time period that would have been the crowd and i was like i don't know if i want to and and if and if his producer would have been you know it's all about who's your producer right and 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 the music i mean i was the vocalist and some of the writing of the lyrics but you know once you have the right sound and the right that you can kind of just anyone could probably, you know, fumble up some lyrics and it's still, you know, a song is a, a good song is a good song is what I'm yeah. kind of trying to say. So, but we weren't able to produce anything. And I just, I, I said, check please. After four years of work, I mean, we record on two inch tape. Uh, so yeah. I spent a significant amount of money. Uh, it yeah. was before Pro, Pro Tools came out later. Uh, everything came out later for the, to ease the production burden. Uh, it all came out kind of later than what we were doing. We spent studio time, we, you know, it was studio musicians. It was expensive, man. I was like, I was like, how yep. much does two inch tape cost? Hundred fifty bucks. I was like, what? Per reel, and then each reel could get maybe four songs. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's like, I mean, you're you're just you're going back, you're going forth. It's like, rah, rah. you're going back yep. and forth. You're, you're hoping you get it all layered. You're doing your you're doing your own vocal two three times to layer it or whatever, and you're just trying to fit all in a forty eight track, right? I mean, it's like. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it was fun. I mean, the experience was priceless, I guess. And I, and I just didn't have that tenacity and the total passion for it. In some ways, I feel like, dang it, why didn't I just keep going in other ways? And then that's my ex-wife now. And, and that kid doesn't talk to me anymore. So it's oh, like, wow. <laughs> just 25. So yeah, it's like, oh, what did I do? But I put the ideal, like raising a family on the altar of, you know, I don't know, like at least maybe a one hit wonder who knows so that, that would be my other question is how did the um the modeling come to an end was it because of the family life or was yeah. there something that just came made it come to, what was the decision to go i'm done yeah that's that's the question and and the answer is like i i literally tattooed my finger uh and i just went totally like i will not as a mormon man i don't want to be in a in a situation with single women i mean i've had some photo shoots mm. where i woke up and i was in bed with some girl and I'm having to, you know, pretend like we're, you know, we're a thing. And as a married man and as a husband, I, um, I wasn't about that. I wasn't going to represent that. And, and a lot of the photo shoots that we did involve something like that. And I so see. I just, I just quit. I mean, I just quit. And it was just like the check stopped coming in. I was like, oh no, what do I do now? <laughs> like, yeah, right. um, I don't know what to do. And I became a real estate agent and got involved in real estate investing and all that stuff for quite some time as a, as a dad. So that was kind of like my dad job, you know, it's weird. Wow. You, don't know, you don't know what to do because you're making so much money and you're traveling all the time. And all of a sudden it all just comes to a screeching halt. And, and it just, it was, it was a weird time to try to figure out how do I be a dad? How do I, I was an instant dad with a two-year-old that, that wasn't my son. So yeah, weird. Big change, big change. Yeah, massive, massive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. so that's what happened and it came to us a haul i mean a total haul. i might i might pick up an agent here in london i'm talking to a lady that used to book me in south africa for boss models and i might pick up uh with either models one here in london or, or select those are the two agencies i might and i'm 50 and whatever you know uh luckily I, I still have some of my hair left up here it's like i just i got some sprouts <laughs> i wish i had your hair man <laughs> don't we all <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what time is it over there right now? You're in It's England. like 2.30 in the morning. It's okay. Just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gotta be, you norm morning for, gotta be a real uh, morning person to hang out with you guys. Right. I was going to say, do you normally hang out this late? Are you normally up this late? And <laughs> You know, when, when I was doing music, I mean, you know, as a musician, you know that you know this, like we, we would do the cheap studio time. So we'd come in at midnight and just get the cheap yeah. time and, and get the whoever we could grab as an engineer, you know, just cheap. We, we were on the cheap, even though it was very expensive, right? But it was yeah. still cheap. And so we'd go till six in the morning and then, you know, you get the studio ears and you think it's amazing and you listen to it tomorrow and it sucks. You're like, right. oh, shit, why did it? And you're like, <laughs> let me do it. And then you do it all over again and you hope you go. So that, that was my life for a long time. So I, I got kind of geared into like creative guy and then I had to go family guy 
up at right. six in the morning. And then, and now I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm 50, I just turned 50, you know, I'll, I'll be 51 this year. Uh, and so it's like, now I'm back the creative guy. And so I hope I'm waking up my kids right now. They're over here somewhere. They're behind those doors. I, I hope I'm being so loud. I'm waking them up. They're, they're, the last, <laughs> they're the last of the Mohicans, man. Wake up. I'll bang on their door right now. And get some revenge. <laughs> yeah. So, so Lisa wasn't able to get her problems fixed. So all she said is, Stuart, she wants to let you know how amazing you are. You're literally oh. super fan. And oh he knows how she feels about him and, and the peace movement. Oh, right on. She's, she's amazing. I mean, she's, she's been such an avid she's like day one uh peace tribe like day one i was we didn't have any followers like six years ago i was because actually my well my oldest son said well he doesn't talk to me anymore but he's my stepson he said you know what you'll never get more followers than my girlfriend's butt that's what he told me he goes you'll never get more followers than my girlfriend's butt on instagram i go really because this girlfriend was like a fitness type chick and she had like a thousand followers or two thousand this is back like six years ago and i go okay well Peace Tribe's gonna happen, man, and, and so now we're like thirteen thousand followers and a couple of celebrity endorsements and stuff. So we surpassed his girlfriend's butt. Uh, so, nice. Yeah, nice. it's like sweet, we did it. <laughs> We've made it, you know. But you know, there's a lot of work to do, and, and so the reason I say that is because Lisa was like day one. She's like, let me hook you up with Mickey Free, an indigenous. You know, you got a Grammy um, for some guitar work and stuff on. I think a uh, Beverly Hills Cop uh, soundtrack. So I, I've met some really cool people and, and, you know, you guys are just up there on, on the, the cool, coolness level. It's like, <laughs> cool, so cool. So she's been delivering and she's just amazing. So I can't say enough nice things about her. Cool. Yeah. We, we yes. love her. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit more about um, 2018 to the present. You became a consultant for barrier inner weapons for peace. Right. And, and sure. let's, Let's get into this because the mission um, published books of substance and inspire and entertain obviously and uh something that you and i talked about in depth via text was being able to bury those inner weapons for peace and what that movement means and we are actually talking about the possibilities of doing a concert that kind of yeah. go along in, in that piece and uh, we'll have to get Robbie involved in that because, you know, there's no better guitarist on this planet than the guy sitting on the other side of the screen. Uh, so, why didn't so, I meet you earlier, man? Why didn't I meet you earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late, brother. It's never too late, man. Yeah, I know. So, so let's talk about that. What got you involved? Where are you at now? Let's talk about the symbolism that we are wearing on our hats right now. Let's Let's really kind of bring this home um for love understanding and peace right on yeah so we're so barrier and weapons uh boils down to we we promote four specific things kindness compassion tolerance and respect kindness compassion tolerance and respect so uh, you know you see a lot of times in these like younger schools it's like the kindness shirt you know if you if you have like a kindergartner first second third fourth grade it's like all about kindness but we just felt like kindness was a little bit not enough of the conversation because I feel like people have lost in the public domain. What is kindness? It's, it has this like almost like subjective, subjective definition. Like what is kindness? Is it, is it flipping someone halfway off when you, when you <laughs> cut, cut them off? Is it, what, what's, what's kindness? Like a half bird, you know, right. I mean, like what, what is, I mean, certainly on, you know, when you talk about social media, and you post something and then you have people coming on, there's trolls. I mean, there's a lot of unkindness. Is it kind to call someone out all the time and express your opinion in a harsh way or even in a non-harsh way? I don't know. So the kindness thing didn't seem like enough. So we wanted to focus on that compassion, taunts, and respect is because we, we want to focus on what we stand for versus what we don't stand for. And so when we did the barrier inner weapons, it's a long name, it's a long title, but, um, and, and we use the word weapon because you know, these weapons of like addiction can be so destructive. It can really like hurt and maim you. Uh, porn addiction uh, can maim people too and hurt relationships. I'm not going to demonize porn or demonize alcohol or demonize gambling or demonize anything because we're not focused on what, what we don't want. In particular, we're focused on what we want, which is we want peace. We want, you know, and how do you gauge and measure peace? So the peace movement is all about if you have it in your weapon, and you can identify it, then you can kind of like bury it. 
So, I mean, who, who in the room or who in the audience has had an alcohol addiction or a drug addiction or oxycodone or, right? I mean, or an anger addiction or a cutting people off in traffic. I mean, you know, I don't know. It's like, so these kinds of things are all part of being human, right? And I feel like, you know, remember that Rob Zombie song, like more human than human, yeah, yeah. human than human. So it's like, you know, um, at this point, where's the humanity anymore? Where's that in the conversation? Uh, I feel like maybe, you know, big business has done so much to take out the humanity and go into the shock and the, and the, and the awe and the ratings. So with this, we're focused on humanity. What makes you a human? What makes you your best self? But you have to just define that for yourself, right? So you would only know. And there's a lot of introspection that's, that's ugly. I mean, if anyone out there has, has had, uh, you know, a violence addiction, a temper addiction, uh, whatever that might be, uh, it's difficult to say, okay, I own that. It's like the 12-step program, right? Like, I own that. Um, it's not something you want to do. It's not something you want to face until maybe you're ready or five of your best friends have told you, you know, you're a douche, man. Why are you doing that? And you need to change that, you know, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? So, so that's really it. I mean, and, and as a, as a symbol, we, we search, uh, when I say we, me and Kelly, my wife, um, I wanted to get her here and she was like, I'm going to sleep, man. I'm not I'm like, I don't know those guys, man. I'm like, these guys are awesome. You're going to, you're really missing out. So I, I'm a co I'm a co-founder, but she's, she's, she's sleeping. But so we looked on the internet for a peace symbol and we came up with this as a true, you know, we're just, you know, a dove is a dove, a peace symbol. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, so it's a broken arrow and, you know, she designed it. So I can't take the credit for it. We literally went to like a t-shirt shop. And we're like, hey, are you good at designing? Yeah. And then, and then the guy, you know, designed the broken arrow for us. And so it's a work in progress, but the broken arrow means peace and a crossed arrow means friendship. So at the end of the day, it represents peace and friendship. And the, the first friend that you want from what we've kind of gathered, and it's a collective body of thought. So we don't think we know it all. We're, we're as a tribe, we're trying to share our best practices. So if you're not a friend with yourself, you got to be a friend with yourself. Uh, and so, and you have to find that peace and friendship within yourself. So that's where the kindness, be kind to yourself, compassionate to yourself, tolerate yourself. So kindness, compassion, tolerance, and respect yourself. And if you do respect yourself, you'll carry yourself in a little different way. Maybe that last drink that would have made you drive drunk, you, you would maybe not either drink it or you take a cab home or whatever. And that gets into like, you know, mothers against drunk drivers. We're not against drunk drivers we're not against anything. We're for people being them be their best selves. So we're for, we're for driving responsibly. We're for, oh, there we go. Right on. That's the tribe, <laughs> tribal members. I like it. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's a great approach because it's a, the, the saying is that um, whatever you fight against weakens you, but that's yes. why you're for whatever you're for, you're, you're strengthening. If you're fighting against something, it's always, we're fighting against cancer. And it's like, yeah, yeah I get right. it. But how about being for health or whatever totally. it may be? Dude, you just nailed it. You couldn't, have, I, you know, man, you're, you're a barrier you're and a weapons like spokesperson. You, you just nailed the exact concept. And, you know, really for me, mother Teresa, lover, hater. I mean, even Gandhi right now is like, Gandhi is a racist. I mean, you're, I the, 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 the public dialogues got, has gotten so, what's it called? Like toxic to yep. where if you've done a hundred million good things, they're looking for the one bad thing about you. And Gandhi didn't ever make a claim that he was like pure as a driven snow. And I'm not making that claim. I, who can, who can make that claim? Right. I don't right. know. Muhammad, who can make that claim? We're not, we're not talking about we're pure as a driven snow. We're trying to just be our best selves, man. Yeah. With, the, with a bunch of frailties and a bunch of emotional issues. But as we focus on exactly what you just said, that's real important, Robbie, as you were saying like that you focus on, you give your power to it, you give your attention to it. And what you focus on expands. So if you're focused on lack or what you don't want, your subconscious mind, all it hears is like, drunk driving drunk driving drunk driving yeah. instead of you know responsible driving responsible vernacular yes. right. responsible relationships with yourself or alcohol or whatever and that's what we're for so when people ask us what do we stand for we stand for for kindness compassion tolerance and respect inwardly and then outwardly and we hope that 100 million people will 
find their highest and best self through the simple bearing of inner weapons. And, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. We have a phone app we're working on for kids. They can log on to the app. It's free. Uh, these things are all, you know, you know how it is when you've been working on something that's six years, there's always something you got to, you know, there's, there's millions of things that need to be done, but kids right. can take the phone app and do their hundred dreams list. They can ask a simple question on a 30 question questionnaire, or sorry, answer the questions. I didn't say that right. And then determine your number one inner weapon, whether it's a lack of written goals, negative self-talk is huge. I mean, when I talk to women, when I interact with women and men, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, my negative self-talk is massive. I just, I, I hear, you know, I suck. I hear I suck. And then there's ways to deprogram that. There's ways, there's, there's, way, there's like tapping things you can do. There's positive self-talk you can say to yourself every day. I am powerful. Yeah. I am, I, I rock. I am smart. I am capable. There's, I am is yeah. powerful. Yeah. That does work. I've, I've used that personally. I Meditation have can, have you? Oh, killer. Oh, killer. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. What, what do you find? What do you find work best for you in that in, the, in these realms? Because we're always looking for advocates and and, and different points of view. Uh, but everything you're saying is pretty much everything. exactly it. It's you know the okay. I am and whatever you want to put in front of it, whatever you're looking for that is for your highest good of yourself and everyone concerned. So yeah. it's not it's not ever looking to attack anyone. It's not to belittle anyone. It's not to to mm -hmm. fight against anything. It's all about mm -hmm. you know starting from within and then it goes without because if you don't yeah. respect yourself within and if you don't have you know uh love for yourself you can't give away what you don't have exactly you gotta start with that and it can be hard because there's a lot of times your own inner voices are telling you other things you know it's mm -hmm. i've had that issue like anybody has you know go out oh, yeah. you know you start you, the self-doubts creep in and then i just i just get rid of them and go you know what i'm here for this purpose and i've been given the power by you know, mm. however you want to look at it, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, right I, on. I prefer to use God, but um, the I right am on. and mm. just, you know, know that I've been given the the opportunities and the things that I need and I have the ability to handle the situation at any point. Um, I would be put in that situation. And right I keep reminding myself that I'm in the presence. If you remind yourself you're in the presence, mm. then you are because the presence right is always there. So you're always in the presence and you just got to remember that, oh yeah, and when I start to do that, things always change. If I start wow. getting frantic and stuff's going crazy and it's like, oh, everything's getting crazy around me and mm -hmm. whatever it may be, it could be like being in the band on the road and it, things are just hectic and I'm, I'm doing a lot of the tour managing and I'm like, things are going haywire. And then all of a sudden I just remember right I'm in the presence and all of a sudden the answers start happening. Somebody comes to me with the right answer. Somebody comes with this, some things start, start everything starts coming. Wow. So you you got to remind yourself that because once you do, it aligns for you. It's like, I said, then I, pardon me, then I go, okay, I myself don't have the capability of doing it, but the power within me does. Yeah. So I allow the power within me to handle it. It's going, I'm trying to handle it all myself. The ego is trying to handle it and go forget it because the yeah. ego can't do it. The ego is going to ruin it. Get the ego out of the way and let the power handle it for you. Totally. And it works every wow. time it works every in my life so far it's worked every single time wow imagine that right imagine being able to to bottle that up and we're not selling it as it goes i mean we're a non-profit i mean the hats we don't make really you know we've been accused of you know we have COVID 19 masks and they're sold at cost people are like what are you doing i'm like it's at cost man i can show you the back end i mean but but imagine being able to not sell that concept because we're not selling it, but we're trying to proliferate exactly what you just said through movies, music, oh, fact, and you know what I mean? Any, any way we can champion what you just said, bottle it up in a, in a palatable, easy to understand and digest way. Like I, like you just said, it's so good right there. And it's worked for you every time. That's what we want. We want people because that brings your peace to that higher level. I mean, we're not going to get perfect peace. We're not going to get, you know, uh, nirvana, so to speak, or whatever, but we can get, like you just said, from, from a frustrated, uh, frantic, egotistical, I have to solve this to another better place. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with the barrier and weapons for peace. You, you just said it so good right there. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and the thing is, it's everybody has it. Nobody, yeah. it's not, it's not exclusive to me. It's not exclusive right. to anyone. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. Right. You just got to find who you are and your purpose and your purposes. I mean, if I start following anybody's path and I know I'm on the wrong path 
because yeah, totally. there's, there's only one path for everybody. So forget what anybody else did. A lot of people are trying to compare themselves to how, whatever it is, could be a guitar player looking at this great guitar player and going, oh, wow, he did this by, who cares? It doesn't matter. Follow your yeah. path. You're an actor, a model. It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you're doing, you could be a, a mechanic. It doesn't yeah. matter. You follow your path and just make sure you go on your path. A teacher, it doesn't matter. It's, totally. it's your your spirit, the spirit within you will guide you if you allow it. A That's radio exactly DJ, like Matt, that. Matt over here. Whatever it is, whatever you're aspiring to be in it, when you allow it to happen, and we get in our own way. We all get totally. in our own way. I get in my own way all the time, and I just have to remember, get out of the way. I'm in the presence, and then you just yeah. let it happen. And it's, it's amazing what happens. Wow. It's amazing. I love it. Totally. And that's exactly the purpose of uh, Barrier and Weapons for Peace is realizing, you know, you're not your best self in your ego when you can have that level of compassion for yourself and say, look, I, I'm just going to let live in, let, let myself receive this gift of, of intelligence beyond my own intelligence, compassion beyond my own compassion, tolerance, you know, that point that you said, like you said, it opens up a different channel. I mean, it's something that's kind of hard to explain. It's not it's not very macho. It's not this whole, you know, football locker room discussion, you know, or beer bonging discussion, but it is a real discussion. It's a discussion. I mean, it's, it's, it's real. And, and there's a lot of power behind that because there's a, there's a power to the submission, how you kind of just said, like it's, it's a bit of submission. And when you do that, it's a, we could say whatever you want, divine God, I, I like God or creator, you know, I don't, I don't like to mix in any specific terms because, you know, you know how it is. It's like, I don't want to cheapen, cheapen my vernacular and be, and be, you know, either demonized or misunderstood yeah. uh, based on vernacular. Cause it's just a way of communicating and it's just a word, but right. the feeling and the tone, it's like the tone behind the music is pure, man. Like how you just yep. said. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. All right. Cool, our producer, AKA Robbie's wife wants to come back in for a couple more questions. So oh, really, right on. Nice. All right. Let's bring her in. <laughs> Sorry, I was just enjoying the conversation. I was living it. I was loving it. Hey, Jess. Hi, I was enjoying the conversation too. And I'm a I teacher. Know, right? And I'm the best teacher ever. So, um, I, we, Robbie and I, I don't know if Robbie told you, but we're married. And so we always do those uh, mantras to our daughter I am powerful. I am strong. I'm a genius. I, I am wealthy. I, every night, I'm a healer. Right, Robbie? Nice. <laughs> That's, I'll do that. I do a lot when she's sleeping. I'll talk over her while she's sleeping. I'll say smart. things. To her. That's smart. Um, I love so it. I'm interested in that love phone it. app of yours for the kids. Okay. So later, we're, we're, let me know or let Robbie know because I want to. We're working on it. it. It involves a hundred dreams list. A hundred sounds like a lot, but believe it or not, if you if you no matter how big you put your dreams, you know you can you can do it. It's not you. It's the said that it's something that when you what you focus on will expand, even if it's a. A 20 year thing. Like I wanted to cure myself of asthma. I got cured. It took 20 years. 20 years is a long time, but it took 20 years to invent the internet and get the information out there and try. But what you're doing with your daughter is priceless. Those are priceless gifts to a child. I, I didn't receive. And a lot of the stuff, you know, that we're doing right now, I love my parents. I have a good relationship now. We, we had a lot of type A behavior that was very um, non tolerant. Um, and it did you know, kind of produce a lot of anxieties towards us. But I, I did, was taught goal setting and my family has a lot of really amazing friends like Stephen Covey, who wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Highly Effective Families, that, that's some of our family friends. So we were, had, I had access to a lot of great thinkers and a lot of great material, but a lot of people don't. So what you're giving your daughters, that's a big gift. That's, a, that's really awesome. I have a question that actually kind of touches on how you were raised. Uh, Brenda wants to know, um, she says, you touched on the standards that you grew up on. How is that contrasted to the way um, you teach your children and how you, how you raise your children? Or is there a contrast? Wow, that's a very good question. And that, that has actually never eluded me from, from a child up to an adult. You know, when you're a kid, you make like, like I would say like kid promises is something I, that's how I say it. And if you make a kid promise, it's like, you better keep that one, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was a kid, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to be, demonize my parents, but as a Mormon, we, we were kind of like, I would say almost like waterboarded with these concepts. Like it was your turn to pray. If you don't go to church, you're, it's like a lot of guilt loading. 
why didn't you go to church? Why didn't you? I mean, it's, it's a heavy, it's a heavy environment because there's tithing you pay on fast Sunday. Every once a month, you fast and don't eat food and give the money you would have eaten to the collective. Uh, so people that don't have food can eat. And that's really all it is. So if it's two meals, it could be like five bucks or 10 bucks and you give that money. So there's all these, you're fasting, you're paying tithing. There's no alcohol, drugs, no sex, no marriage. I mean, it's really a lot that to take on as a kid and when you're eight you're baptized and it's a big covenant so you you make all these commitments at eight and so you think well where's your head at at eight are you are you thinking i want to pay tithing for the rest of my life so when i grew up in that environment it was very like you will do this and guilt and in my environment with my kids it's always optional the you know, faith-based ideas are optional you get a chance to come to family prayer we have a family mission statement and so if you want to come to family prayer, we do like rock, paper, scissors, you know, boom. And the winner of the seven or eight, whoever's there in the circle gets to pray. So you get to be the voice, you get to pray and you can pray your way. You could do an om tone. I don't care. It don't really matter how you pray. We're not going to say, but you know, as it goes to the culture, we don't force anything, any belief as far as spirit on the kids, but they do have to make their bed. They do have to do the dishes, cut the lawn. That stuff's not optional, or you know, you may have to sleep outside the tent and you get carrots and water and bread. Uh, <laughs> until you can fly. Yeah, but as far as religion, it's not put on the kids. Uh, it, you know how how I was kind of like guilt loading, whatever we try to do. It's completely love based and no no judgment. As best as I, you know, I say no judgment, but I'm sure uh, I'm I'm sure there is judgment. I'm sure I'm I'm have a lot of blind spots in my own self. But it's as much as I can conjure no judgment mentality uh, with, with all my blind spots. That's good. And nice. then we have another question from Becky. She wants to know, um, what have you enjoyed doing the most out of everything you've done? Oof, everything <laughs> I've done. Oh, my gosh. Enjoyed the most. I try to be in the now. I mean, like right now in my, in my current life, I, I had, you know, a 15-year marriage that ended up in divorce and I ended up by lack of the situation with all the kids I ended up with sole custody so I was me raising the kids all by myself and it was a pretty heavy grind with the five uh, four kids and you know some of them were very young and up to 12 year old was the oldest at the time so and in the now I have a lovely wife I mean I focused on the now I mean like the things that we're doing here in England right now we're like I just went to a uh, a, a home that was built in 900 uh, after the death of Christ, or whatever, however you use the term now. Whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever a, the term. A, yeah. AD. Yeah. AD. After death, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. AD. And it was so beautiful. And there's like, cow I mean, it's like the food out here is so good. My li my life is so great. You know, talking to you guys right now is like a, is, is like a high. Uh, you know, but I mean, I, I I've always been a thrill seeker. Like I skydive. I do, I do karate, like mixed martial arts. I ride motorcycles fast. I've, I have old cars, like a 68 Camaro. I go fast. I blow, I blow, the, I used to blow their engines and get new engines, you know? So I like to go fast and ride hard. I mean, I, I, I probably didn't think I was going to live to this age, quite frankly, but here I am and I haven't died yet. I, I consider myself halfway dead. I don't know. I'm probably more than halfway dead. <laughs> Maybe they'll figure out a way to glue the telomeres on our DNA together and, and then that'll stop the aging process. But, you know, my glue is, is, is unraveling. So I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I love life. I've been very blessed in life. I mean, uh, how, how your husband is saying, I mean, I, I have a lot to be grateful for, even in the hardest of times being homeless. I did a lot of prayer, a prayer, I call it prayer work. And so I'm the happiest when I'm serving others, to, to, quite frankly. Uh, you know, I had a saying when I was a kid, you can always throw up on daddies. And my kids would they'd throw up on me. I'm like, you can't throw up on mommy. You can always throw up on daddies. And so, you know, <laughs> kids would throw up on me and diapers and chicken pox and everything. And, you know, so I, I'm always happiest when I'm serving others. And, you know, we get a chance to feed the homeless, clothe the homeless. You know, it, we got a lot of blessings and opportunities. And, and with this with this movement, we get a, so much positive energy back. It's way more than we give out. It's, it's just Great. amazing. Great. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you touched on it there. And, and, and it really goes for everybody that, because um, a lot of people are depressed in society. But the truth is, if you help other people, it gets you out of your depression. 
And that totally. is, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. It, there's something about it. It's very spiritual. When you help other people, you feel better about yourself. And it could right. be the smallest little things. I mean, I could be in the weirdest little mood and I might be driving and then yeah. I'll let somebody in who's trying to get in and more people are cutting them off. And all of a sudden I start feeling better. Yeah. You, know, it's like, yeah. Oh, it's like, you go ahead, go in, go in or whatever. Maybe you help you open a door for somebody as they're coming out of the store. You start feeling better. Little things. Oh yeah, totally. things, but it yeah. all adds up. It, it's it's you touched on it. That's exactly it. And a lot of people don't realize it because they're always like, "I need this, I need this, I need, I need, I need." Yeah, you That's want, right. you want, you want, you want. Do you so really true. Need? Yeah, I don't know if you really need. You know. That's true. Yeah, there, and there's there's a lot of 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 that conversation that isn't getting airtime. That yeah, it could be, right. It's it's always like, well, who's doing what, and who's the bad guy, and how can I put you in jail, and who needs yes. to prison, and who needs to do, and and then you know the stories that how you're talking, you know, those are very important times of my day. Uh, I mean, I was I was a Boy Scout, right, and I didn't get the eagle, or whatever, but they taught you do a good good turn every day, and it, with the peace right. movement, I feel like that's a that's something I haven't been able to put into vernacular what that is, but pick up a piece of trash off the street if you're comfortable. I know it's COVID-19 and everyone's like, oh, so fr frightened all the time. So it's like, it's gotten us all like a uh, reptilian brain, right? We're all like, oh, you're going to poison me. You're killing me. And it's always like, you're killing me. And you're, you know, but we're all killing ourselves in a way by not taking those opportunities, as you just mentioned, as to letting someone in, in traffic. That's a very British thing, by the way. People do let you in over here. The oh, driving. Really? Is, oh, and, and that because we're in a village. We're not in London, so a lot of Americans are. You're in London, but we're in a village near the ocean, and and now and the villages. I mean, people do let you in. It's a lot of polite driving and really high levels of consciousness in this country. Um, like, there's no um, what's it called artificial colors. There's no GMOs. They're wow. very, in some ways, it's kind of hippie. It's kind of like intelligent hippies uh, are, are all out here just letting each other in in traffic and sharing like you know locally grown food and. It's all about like gin. They grow their own gin and make gin and make their own vegetables. It's pretty, it's pretty trippy and it's pretty awesome in, in these particular ways. Uh, as far as uh, kindness is a is a normal way of life versus I'm gonna cut you off and I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna take advantage. Uh, it's more normal to be kind for some reason in in England. I don't know if, if it's just this era. But I, I love that feeling too. And, it, and it's an addictive feeling. It can, it can almost get selfish. It's like smile at someone, pick up some trash, open a door, let someone in, share your food. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's, it's an amazing high, right? It is. It is. And, it, and, it, and there is a lot of anxiety and depression and in, in this it's talked about constantly. There's a whole generation of Prozac people. And, you know, unfortunately the first person shooters have been linked to Prozac uh, on uh, Columbine, Sandy Hook. A lot, about ninety percent of the first-person shooters were linked to. It's been black labeled now. I'm not against it or for it. I'm just saying. I mean, there, there's situations that require psychiatry and psychology, you know, and things and, and medicine, right? But then there's situations that don't, right? Like my my daily grind. You know, I just like to do good and I feel good. There you go. Dale says positive vibes make a positive tribe. So <laughs> right on. Right on. Right on, Dale. Shaka, bro. Right. <laughs> Man, I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight, brother. I I, I can't believe it. It's got to be what, 3 30 in the morning over there for you now? It feels like the chickens are ready to, you know, do their thing bro. in the backyard here. <laughs> But no, it feels good. I mean, to be with like-minded people like you guys, like I said, if, if you guys want to give out hats or whatever, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're a nonprofit. It, it, you know, we have donors. We've had some, um, you know, celebrity donors. We've, you know, we don't have millions yet or anything like that, but when we do, we'll have phone apps and we'll, we'll, we'll be really rocking and we'll have a movie. Absolutely. You guys are we'll building the movement. Little... It's on, it's on Instagram. Is that what you said? You guys have a, the followers are on. Or yeah, so I think Facebook has like a thirteen thousand. We've we've like stuck at the thirteen thousand on like Facebook and Instagram because we don't don't boost a whole lot of posts to get followers. Yeah, so we're right at that like thirteen thousand. I don't know why we're at that number. It, what is it under again? Let me write that because I'm gonna. Oh, go okay, there. yeah, yeah, okay. So on Instagram, it's called we just it's called Peace Tribe. Okay. Uh, and then it's technically bury your inner weapons and the number four piece. 
Okay. So it's very, it's very long. I couldn't figure out a way to shorten it. It's, okay. it's very, very, but uh, peace, peace drive. So cool. I'll look for it. I'll yeah. go, I'll, I'll go and uh, like, give a like. Right on. Thanks brother. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, share, some links. we'll share some links oh, on our cool. Facebook page and our, on our uh, website there for this. And yeah, then I take some, uh, right. We'll get some people that want to get some of the merchandise or sign up for the merchandise or something like that. And then I will get with you and, and we'll figure that out, Stuart. So well, that we'll you make can do a giveaway. You can do a giveaway, whatever you guys want to do. It's such an honor Absolutely. to finally meet you guys. Like when I watched some of your shows and Lisa talked about you guys, I was like, Oh, these guys are good, man. I can't wait to rap with these guys, man. These guys are pro. And I've <laughs> been promoting you guys. I've been promoting you guys on, on, uh, Thank you very inner weapons and stuff so i've got a lot of family a lot of families watching you guys and people. oh cool yeah. hi <laughs> that's yeah. awesome my brother hi mom, you and I, hi, mom. <laughs> right actually you spoke <laughs> to my mom too brenda the question about uh, the connection with your childhood was my mother oh wow it was a very that's insightful good. uh question i thought she's you have a great a great mom she's a brilliant woman absolutely so Let's talk. Lastly, you and I are talking about doing a concert. Yeah. We've got to get this together. It's a concert for peace. We want it to kind of be along the same lines of like a farm aid or, or something like that. But it's what you said at best. You said not sex and drugs. It's, it's, it's hugs and love, right? Yeah. 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 So kind of just something along those lines. Yeah. And then we'll definitely, you know, proceeds and stuff will go to the charities to help. Um, bring more peace and unity across our, our planet because that's in desperate need right now. Wow, you said it. It's like we we got this weird climate right now. We just want to focus on the power of agreement, getting people agreeing on a basic level and then go from there. Just start listening. You don't have to agree. You don't have to be I. Yeah. I you just have to be no. empathetic. Listen. And stop judging. And, it, and if what they say doesn't work for you, cool. That's their person. We can still be friends. We can still hug it out and, and get on with our lives. It doesn't okay. have much condemnation, you know, right. and anger and hatred. So we're trying to put an end to that. So as always, my brother, I thank you so much for joining us. I have nothing but love and respect for you. And we're going to continue talking after this. I am absolutely sure. All right, guys. I'll All see right. you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan. I appreciate you, brother. All right, Robbie. Cool. It's amazing. That was good. It always seems to get better towards the end, you know, as I you know. get going, the ends just start picking up steam. I know, man. We got to figure out a way to just cut out the first 45 minutes and get the last half hour up front. Right. <laughs> it's tricky because you're just kind of everybody's getting them just comfortable. And even though he was seemed really comfortable right from the get go, just pretty comfortable. But it just always seems to be that way, though. He, he's an incredible guy. We've been talking a lot and everything that he says, he'll, he'll text me. And then at the end of it, he'll do, you know, the little symbol of this and a heart on everything or everything I say, he'll put a love on it. He's just a very good spirit, very good human being. And, and we've been blessed with that here lately. In fact, let's talk a little bit more. We've got some new, some other guests coming up that uh, we have gotten into the rotation. Of course, next week, we've got Michael Bluestein, a foreigner, joining us here live on the Hangout Live. Um, but we got, we got uh, Johnny Drama in the mix from the Wahlberg clan joining us on August 31st. This guy's a riot, dude. And I've got to send you his tracks. He's, he's got the most incredible studio I've ever seen. i got to send you pictures of this. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's the funky funk. And, it, dude, it's going to be a blast. Obviously, he's the Wahlburgers cousin. He's been on the show, Wahlburgers. Um, the movie Entourage, there was a character written about him called Johnny Drama. So he's going to be fantastic. But the last couple of days, I've been talking to Leroy Butler. And you turned me on. Leroy. Oh, yeah, Leroy. Here she Leroy yeah. Butler. And he was, he is the Baha, the Baha men. Of course, they had the huge hit back in the 90s. But uh, same line as the conversation we had tonight. Yeah. Now he, he's got something called Love and Unity and his new music's all about love and unity. And I told him today I wasn't feeling all that great. I was having some blood pressure issues and he's texting me nonstop, you know, do this, do that, do this. He's he just a fantastic human being. We've been blessed. We've been very blessed. 
Yeah, we're, we're going to continue yeah. to share this. And that, right. that brings us through to the end of the month, right? That brings us through uh, the end. I, I think we're good until the end of September. Well, I mean, those two bring us to the end of the month that we are going to take the Labor Day Monday off. We are. We're going to take Labor Day weekend off. I take the and, Labor Day because it's been, we've been going straight for four months now. Weeks. 16 weeks. It's in four months, yeah. Yep, yep. Every Monday night. So, so we'll we take the Labor Day off, off and let everybody party and that way we, you know whatever but we have right. all of september booked yeah it's and it's there's great. a possibility we switch formats at some point here it could be happening we'll see it's in the works yeah so we're praying for that we might be switching over to the twitch platform and that would be fantastic for everybody so and we wouldn't uh wouldn't be any changes let's hear it for backbeat music my wife keeps pointing up to their sign and, okay i'm going to show you this to get the light where are you going robbie so just to get light on me see this she's got a light pole or a, a lamp with a shade on and then it says backbeat music and media jaw written on it let's move you back around the home here <laughs> so she pointed out so backbeat music alexandra um we love you jody over at media yeah. job we love you as well my brother go over and check out our website the hangout.live you can see all the past guests you can see who's Brad coming and up Kim for getting you, you drunk we only drank that much tonight I only drank half three quarters of a glass right brad's awesome thank you so much for that get your t-shirts if you want your t-shirts put a comment down below and uh, we'll get you taken care of but i think we get on out of here all right all right we'll see you next time and one love <laughs>